Hi, it's Liz from GMums Place again, and I'm here today with John Grisham's book, The Abduction. It's number two in the Theodore Boone series, and it was published in 2011 and has 232 pages. Here's the synopsis. Hey, Leaper, where's April Finnamore? Leaper offered a nasty grin and yelled back, You'll never find her. Is she alive? You'll never find her. Theodore Byrne's best friend April has disappeared in the middle of the night. The only suspect is an escaped convict and he won't give them any answers. Thirteen-year-old Theo, the son of two lawyers, knows the criminal justice system. Terrified that he'll never see April again, he begins his own investigation. But as the days drag on with no new leads, Theo starts to think the police are chasing the wrong person. Can he hunt down the truth and find his friend? Or is it really too late? Here are the opening paragraphs. The abduction of April Finnamore took place in the dead of night, sometime between 9.15pm when she last spoke with Theo Boone and 3.30 a.m. when her mother entered her bedroom and realised she was gone. The abduction appeared to have been rushed. Whoever took April did not allow her to gather her things. Her laptop was left behind. Though her bedroom was fairly neat, there was some clothing strewn about, which made it difficult to determine if she had been able to pack. Probably not, the police thought, her toothbrush was still in the sink. Her backpack was by her bed. Her pyjamas were on the floor, so she at least had been allowed to change. Her mother, when she wasn't crying or ranting, told the police that her daughter's favourite blue and white sweater was not in the closet. And April's favourite sneakers were gone too. So, because Theo had been the last to talk to her, the police contacted his parents and asked them to bring him to April's house at 4.30 in the morning. When Mrs. Finnamore settled down, Mrs. Boone asked the officer, what happened? He responded with a quick summary of what little they knew at that point. Did you talk to her last night? The officer asked Theo. The cop's name was Bollock, Sergeant Bollock, which Theo knew because he'd seen him around the courthouse. Theo knew most of the policemen in Strattenburg as well as most of the lawyers, judges, janitors and clerks in the courthouse. Yes, sir, at 9.15, according to my phone log. We talk almost every night before going to bed, Theo said. Bollock had the reputation of being a wise guy. Theo wasn't prepared to like him. How sweet. Did she say anything that might be useful here? Was she worried, scared? Theo was immediately caught in a vice. He could not lie to a police officer, yet he could not tell a secret that he'd promised he wouldn't tell. So he fudged a bit by saying, I don't recall anything like that. Mrs. Finnamore was no longer crying. She was staring intensely at Theo, her eyes glowing. What did you talk about? Sergeant Bollock asked. A detective in plain clothes entered the room and listened carefully. The usual stuff. School, homework. I don't remember everything. Theo had watched enough trials to know that answers should often be kept vague and that I don't recall and I don't remember were perfectly acceptable in many instances. Did you chat online? The detective asked. No, sir. Not last night. Just phone. They often used Facebook and text messages, but Theo knew not to volunteer information. Just answer the question in front of you. He'd heard his mother say this to her clients many times. Okay, this is another part of the conversation with the police at April's house. A female officer in uniform had entered the den from upstairs and she sat with Mrs. Finnamore, who was again distraught and overcome. Sergeant Bollock nodded at the Boones and motioned for them to follow him into the kitchen. They did and the detective joined them. Bollock glared at Theo and in a low voice said, Did the girl ever mention a relative in prison in California? No, sir, Theo said. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. What is this all about? Mrs. Boone jumped in. 
She was not about to stand by silently while her son was rudely interrogated. Mr. Boone was ready to pounce too. The detective pulled out an 8x10 black and white photo, a mugshot of a shady looking character who gave every indication of being a veteran criminal. Bollock went on. Guy's name is Jack Leeper, a ten-time loser, distant cousin to May Finnamore, even more distant to April. He grew up around here, drifted away a long time ago, became a career thug, petty thief, drug dealer and so on. Got busted in California for kidnapping ten years ago, sentenced to life with no parole. Escaped two weeks ago. This afternoon we got a tip that he might be in this area. Theo looked at the sinister face of Jack Leeper and felt ill. If this thug had April, then she was in serious trouble. Bollock continued. Last night around 7.30, Leeper here walks into the Korean quick shop four blocks away, buys cigarettes and beer, gets his face captured on the surveillance cameras. Not the smartest crook in the world, so we know he's definitely in the area. Why would he take April, Theo blurted, his mouth dry with fear, his knees ready to buckle. According to authorities in California, they found some letters from April in his prison cell. She was his pen pal. Probably felt sorry for the guy, because he's never supposed to get out of prison. So she strikes up a correspondence. We've searched her room upstairs and can't find anything he may have written to her. She never mentioned this to you? The detective asked. Never, Theo said. He had learnt that with April's weird family, there were many secrets, many things she kept to herself. So, after leaving April's house, it's around sunrise, and the Boone family decide to go and have some breakfast. Here is what they discuss. As soon as the waitress walked away, Mrs. Boone looked Theo squarely in the eyes and said, OK, let's have it. There's something else to the story. Theo was constantly amazed at how easily his mother could do this. He could tell only half of a story, and she immediately looked for the other half. He could offer up a little fib, nothing serious, maybe something just for fun, and she instinctively pounced on it and ripped it to shreds. He could duck a direct question, and she would fire back with three more. Theo suspected she had acquired this skill after years as a divorce lawyer. She often said that she never expected her clients to tell her the truth. I agree, said Mr. Boone. Theo couldn't tell if he really agreed or whether he was just tag-teaming with his wife, which he often did. Mr. Boone was a real estate lawyer who never went to court, and while he missed little, he was usually a step or two behind Mrs. Boone when it came time to grill Theo about something. April told me not to tell anyone, Theo said, to which his mother responded quickly, and April is in big trouble right now, Theo. If you know something, let's have it. And now. Her eyes narrowed, her eyebrows arched. Theo knew where this was headed. And truthfully, he knew it was better to level with his parents. Mrs. Finnamore wasn't home when I talked to April last night, Theo said. His head low, his eyes darting left and right. And she wasn't home the night before. She's taking pills and she's acting crazy. April's been living by herself. Where's her father? Mr. Boone asked. He's off with his band. Hasn't been home in a week. Doesn't he have a job? Mrs. Boone asked. He buys and sells antique furniture. April says he makes a few bucks, then disappears for a week or two with his band. That poor girl, Mrs. Boone said. Are you going to tell the police? Theo asked. Both parents took long sips of their coffee cups. They exchanged curious looks as they pondered this. They eventually agreed that they would discuss it later at the office while Theo was at school. Mrs. Finnamore was obviously lying to the police, but the Boones were reluctant to get in the middle of that. They doubted if she knew anything about the abduction. She seemed distressed enough. She probably felt guilty for being away when her daughter was taken. The food arrived and the waitress refilled the coffee cups. Theo was drinking milk. The situation was very complicated and Theo was relieved to have his parents involved in doing their share of the worrying. Anything else, Theo? Uh, his father asked. Not that I can think of. His mother said, When you talked to her last night, was she frightened? 
Yes, she was really scared and also worried about her mother. Why didn't you tell us? His father asked. Because she made me promise not to tell. April has to deal with a lot and she's very private. She's also embarrassed by her family and tries to protect them. She was hoping her mother would show up at any minute. I guess someone else did. Theo suddenly lost his appetite. He should have done more. He should have tried to protect April by telling his parents or perhaps the teacher at school. Someone would have listened to him. He could have done something. But April swore him to silence and she kept assuring him she was safe. The house was locked. Plenty of lights were on and so forth. And Theo went on to school afterwards. This book's animal court case is about an African grey parrot named Pete, who is 50 years old and has been with his family for a long time. I love this book. Theo is again courageous and clever. His friends assist him in searching for April. And the animal court case is a lot of fun. We also see some repeat characters as well as meeting some new ones. John Grisham does an excellent job with these books and I am looking forward to reading the next one. I really enjoyed this book and gave it five stars on Goodreads. As always, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Smash the like button and say hi in the comments. Also, let me know what you're reading. Thank you very much for watching this video.